on XM Radio, it started the first part of November. The Christmas carols on two or three different XM stations there, and uh, that's all we listened to. And then the other day, I turned it on, and they had jazz mu music from the 40s. I <laughs> took it off. <laughs> I was kind of, I said to Ruth, well, they're done with Christmas for this year. But anyway, uh, I sure... I sure enjoy Christmas time, and uh, but we we need to we need to worship God all times of the year. But anyway, uh, my message today is on prayer. But before I start, uh, I'd like to tell a little story here. This this burglar, he was uh, breaking into houses, and he was had his crowbar in this window, and he was prying the window up, and he got the window up and he put one leg through and of course it was dark and uh, he heard this little voice in the corner of the room I see you and Jesus sees you and he he stopped and he took his pen light and he shined over there was a little parrot in the corner in a cage uh, he says just stupid little bird so he stepped the rest of the way in and he put the window down and the little bird says I see you and Jesus sees you and he said he shined the light back there he says that's the only thing you can say you stupid bird and the bird said sick him Jesus and a 150 pound Doberman pincher come out of the corner his name was Jesus <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yeah I want to <clears throat> years ago here when I taught down and when I first started back to church here I I taught the uh junior primary class from uh, 10 to 12 year olds and uh, anyway we had a thing in there one time and it was on prayer and I guess you would call this I'm not an English student but I guess you would call it paraphrasing but anyway it took each letter of prayer and had a meaning for it like and uh, the <clears throat> anyway uh, we, as Lori said there before, we, we really need to stay close to God and pray and read our Bibles because uh, I believe God's return is imminent and uh, real close at hand. And uh, I believe that prayer, we need to, uh, we need to stay close to God and uh, take time I, I told my kids down there one time when I taught on this and I said you take each morning and you take if it's only 10-15 minutes so you read your Bible and you pray and you come back next week and you tell me if your your day wasn't better and uh, but uh, you know that's just like putting on your 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 armor of God you know and when Jesus hung on that cross, and uh, a matter of fact, I watched a good segment all last Saturday evening, or maybe it was Sunday evening, uh, Christmas Eve. It was called The Bible. I don't know if any of you caught that or not. It was on the History Channel. And it went through, through from the birth of Christ straight up through all his miracles, and it was pretty much 95% right on. But it showed him hanging on that cross and what he went through. But he, he said it was finished. Uh, the earth quaked. And old Sapius and them in the temple that condemned him to death. It, it, sh it showed pieces of the ceiling falling out. And it even said that saints rose from the dead. And was walking around. When Christ gave up his spirit, it brought a lot of them back to life. I don't know about you, but if I just saw, I just saw Aunt Sally coming to my door when she'd been dead for 20 years, it would have got my attention. But anyway, uh, as he gave up his spirit and said it was finished, that temple curtain was, they say, 14 inches thick. And it was rendered. It was ripped. And... That's symbolic this morning that we can come to God anytime, any place. If you're riding down the road, whatever you're doing, 
We can come to him into the Holy of Holies because he made access to us anytime, any place, any time of the day. And we, we have access to that. Where before the priest could only go in once a year. And they had to follow all kind of strict regulations to go in there. Blood on their right thumb, blood on their right big toe. And they had to be, they had to wash their hands and their feet put blood on them and then they had to have their tunic and everything just perfect their tassels and then they tied a rope around them because if they went in there and everything just wasn't so so God strike them dead and they had to drag them out of there they weren't allowed to go into the presence of God but thank God that he made a new and a better covenant and he rendered the temple curtain and now we have access to him but <clears throat> as I break this down the first word in prayer is P for praise. And, uh, you know, ten, too many times uh, we, we come to God and we, we uh, name it and glab, grab it and blab, or blab it and grab it, you know. And it's, that isn't what it's all about. Uh, you know, in the Bible times, if you came before a king and you you weren't noticed and you didn't bow down you got your head cut off even when Bathsheba went into David to talk to him she she had that bow down and asked permission to speak to him but you know same way with God we need to uh, we need to come before him and uh, the disciples said to Jesus Lord teach us to pray and uh, in Matthew, uh, I believe it's 6, uh, 6, 9, yeah. And it says, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And uh, Jesus uh when he, his disciples ask him how how should we how should we pray lord and that's what he said to him he said uh and he says don't don't he says our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our debts as we also forgive our have forgiven our debtors and lead us into not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one now one time here we did a study. It was called Could You Not Tarry for One Hour? And it was, uh, it was through Larry Lee and it was based on the Lord's Prayer. And all, every segment of the Lord's Prayer was broken down. And uh, you know, uh, but anyway, uh, it, it broke each segment down and it explained how you could actually pray through that Lord's Prayer and you could pray for an hour very easily. And uh, actually, when I still pray, I still use part of that because that's what he said to his disciples. You know, this, this is how I'll teach you to pray. And uh, but we need, when we go into prayer, we need to not just ask God for everything and because he says he knows what we need before we even ask him. But... In faith believing if we make our petitions known you know I don't know about you but when my kids always ask me for something you know they they expected it because they were my kids and that's the way we are with God okay the second uh, the second letter in that is R and that is reprint repent uh, we we need to be we need to ask God, and I'm going to go into Psalms here. I'm going to go into Psalms uh, 19 and verse, uh, verse 13 and 14. And this is, this is what David prayed. Uh, in, in verse 13 he says, Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. 
then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So David prayed that every day. And he was a repentant man. He said he was a man after God's own heart. And, you know, in our, in our daily walk, uh, we sin. And uh, I, I, think, I think one of the first things we need to do when we pray is, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for anything we've said anything sins of commission sins of omission things we didn't do because uh, we're responsible for that too uh, if we we're supposed to do something and God's telling us to do something and we don't do it that, that's that's a sin of omission and uh, but anyway in John he said if we ask him to forgive us he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and uh and you know i i think there's i think are sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit i think are sins that we do and we don't even maybe realize we're doing it and then i think are sins of the spirit where we keep doing things over and over again and uh you know we're we're actually crucifying christ fresh and anew he said every time we, he, we, we fell, he fills the nails. And uh, anyway, and that thing I was watching last week when he appeared to his disciples, and when he appeared to Thomas, he said, look, Thomas, you could see a hole right through his hand. And it, as David Jeremiah said this morning, he, he walked on this earth for 40 days after he was crucified. And he showed that he was the risen Christ. And, uh, but anyway. And then <clears throat> the other letter is A. Ask. And I'm going to go back here to Matthew again. Matthew, uh, first of all, 6, 5. And, and 6, 5. And, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men by men i tell you the truth they have received their reward in full but when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is on scene then your father who sees what is done in secret will will reward you you know i i don't i don't think we need to make our prayers this long, you know. I, I think we need to be precise and per persistent and precise. God, this, this you, you know what I need, but I'm, I'm, as your child, I'm coming to you, Lord, with this need. And, uh, and then Matthew 7, 7. And then it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened unto you. So we need to, we need to ask God. We need to, like I said, we need to be precise and we need to be persistent. And I don't think it's wrong to ask God, why? I don't think it's wrong to ask him why more than once. But I believe as we go on, he'll reveal to us his answer is either going to be yes, no, or wait. And many times, if we, we got what we ask him, it would be disastrous. You know, many times in my life, I've, I've prayed for stuff and it hasn't come. But then when I went down the road, I found out, well, God, you knew exactly what he was doing. You know, you, 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 had, you, had, you had my plan way. He says, I know your thoughts. And he says, I, and Jeremiah, he says, I have plans to bless you and to 
uh, keep you and to uh, just to bless you, to bless you in your life. And uh, I know years ago when I, my brother Rodney moved, moved to Florida and uh, I was, I was 43 years old and I, I was out of a job and I worked for Hawbaker for about a year and they laid me off and uh, anyway, I really didn't, I really didn't like it there and I was really torn what I wanted to do and uh, a buddy of mine here was, uh, he was state police lieutenant over in Rockview and he was supposed to get me a job at Rockview in the Department of Corrections in the kitchen and uh, anyway I even talked to the superintendent there and stuff and I thought I had an in and it, well, it just fell through. And I was really discouraged and almost a whole nother year went by and uh, I had put applications in and uh, anyway Ruth, uh, I was helping my buddy put up a, a pasture fence for his sister and uh, she came up and she said, hey look what you got, you got an interview for a boot camp. And uh, anyway, I, I went and I interviewed and I, I got a better job and a better place than, so God, God sometimes closes a door here and it opens a, or closes a window and then opens a door here. So we just have to trust him. And the other word here is why, yield. Uh, I'm going to go to Ephesians 5.17 here. Therefore, for, for, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And what the will of God is in our life. I remember my brother Dean saying one time, and I'll never forget it. He said, we should go as far as ahead, ahead in the will of God as we can see. And, you know, that when the Israelites were in the desert, they, they traveled by a pillar of fire by night in the sky and a cloud by day. And when that thing stopped, they stopped. And sometimes they camp for a month or two and they never move till that cloud started moving and then they'd pack everything up and they'd follow it. So that's the way we are with the will of God. And uh, I believe the will of God has a lot to do with our attitude. And I, I had this little thing cut out of here years ago. And I, my, we had a football coach in high school. And he went all over the locker room and he put attitude and big posters all over. And he said, I'm going to tell you boys something. If you don't have the right attitude, you're not going to be any good. He said, you've got to have the right attitude towards this game. And I think we have to have the right attitude toward God. And uh, it says here, develop an overcoming attitude. The disappointments of life can cause you to see nothing but negativity in your future. You express hopelessness, belittle your abilities, refuse to take any risks, say no to personal growth opportunities, complain about unfairness of life, and say that nothing you do will make a difference in a particular circumstance. Do you recognize any of these attitudes in yourself? If so, there's good news. Dr. Phil Meir, a Christian psychiatrist, says, attitudes are nothing more than habits of thought. The habits can be acquired, and action repeated becomes an attitude realized. That, that means with practice you can develop an overcoming attitude. Here's how. One, be honest about your quest to conquer pessimism. Give someone you respect the permission to point out when you are being negative. Two, limit your exposure to negative input. Since you become like the company you keep, look for people who fortify your faith and not feed your fears. 
He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Volu three, volunteer to serve others who are less fortunate. Serving, <coughs> serving creates positive feelings and gives you a sense of value. It's also the right thing to do. Four, look for a good, good in every situation and always express faith that, there's, uh, that it's there. President Harry Truman said, a pessimist is one who makes difficulties of his opportunities and an optimist is one who makes opportunities of his difficulties. When you face a, diff face a difficulty today, see it as an opportunity because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. Amen. That is good. That, I have to press the amen button on that. I don't even know how you do it anyway. But, uh, okay, the next one is E, expect. We're going to go to Proverbs 11, 7, and verse 23. I got so many places marked out here. Okay, Proverbs 11, 7. When a wicked man dies, his hope perishes, and all, and all he expected from his power comes to nothing. In verse 23, desire, the desire of a righteous ends only in good but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. So, uh, you know, when we, when we pray, we need to expect something good to come out of it. Uh, when, uh, you know, when they were praying for Peter and John to be released, they were, they were waiting to be beheaded. Old Herod was going to cut their heads off. And they were all in a room there and they were praying and uh, praying for Peter. And a knock come at the door and the servant girl went to answer the door and she said, it's, it's Peter. And none of them believed her. So, you know, we need, to, we need to put feet to our prayers and faith to our prayers. And, uh, you know, Pray, pray expectant, you know. Uh, Jesus, when he did all the miracles, he, he'd say to those people, what, what do you need? Or what do you expect me to do? And they would say it, and he would, he would heal them. He would do it. So we need, we need to expect. And the last letter in that prayer is R, receive. Uh, we'll go to 1 Peter 4.10 Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. Faithfully administer God's grace in various forms. Jesus said freely you receive, freely give. And uh when we receive from God, uh, let's face it, if we was all doing what we should do, there'd be more people here. So this, this year, make it, your, make it your goal, make, make your New Year's resolution to uh, tell as many people as you can about God and, you know, invite them to church. And, uh, because uh, let's face it, we're we're few in numbers, and we're not the only ones like this. There's 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 some churches flourishing, but uh, you know the word's spoken here and the spirits here, and uh, but uh, we need we need to what we receive we need to share with others. You know the good news and. Uh, the good news is that uh, Jesus Christ came as a babe, as we celebrated last week, like Lori said. And he spent 33 years on this earth, and he was crucified. And he rose again, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. 
So when we pray, it's our, it's our lifeline. Even though he left the Holy Spirit here to be a comforter, a counselor, a, a, he says he's a friend to stick closer than a brother. And, uh, you know, he's an encourager. And, uh, but we still, need, we still need our prayer life. As Lori said before, we need to read our Bibles. Uh, a lot of days, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I cheat a little bit on my prayers. But I, I always, always read the Word before I do anything. And my wife and I usually sit at the breakfast table and I, I pray for my family. Uh, I pray for, uh, I pray for people that need, need God, that need a touch in body. And I pray for this nation. Pray for God's will of this nation. What a mess. What a mess right now. You see one side trying to keep the other side from voting and it, it's just a terrible mess. It's just, it's evil. And then, you know, these, uh, these extremists, these Palestinian, uh, they're extremists, they're, 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 they're evil. Yesterday they was demonstrating in a McDonald's. The little guy coming out with two little kids and they're screaming at him. And, and you watch tonight if they don't go into Times Square. I guarantee you. They'll be there. And, uh, what a, and it's just, you know, if this country had any backbone, they'd pack them up. Most of them are here on visas. Send them, send them back where they, where they belong. But they're, they're, they're causing havoc. And now it's getting violent. They, they attacked policemen the other day there and stuff. So we really need to pray for the will of God in this country. Man, oh man. But in closing, I want to read you something. And I, I found this. And I've read this in the past. But as I, I read before, great, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. It says... Magnify the Lord with me, a decoration of God's greatness. The word magnify means to enlarge. The problem isn't too big. Our concept of God is too small. The following words are a declaration of God's greatness. Begin repeating them over your circumstances each day and watch what happens. He is the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. Keeper of creation, creator of the universe manager of all times he always was always is always will be the world can't understand him uh, its armies can't defeat him its schools can't explain him its leaders can't ignore him herod couldn't kill him the pharisees couldn't confuse him nero couldn't crush him hitler couldn't silence him he's the power of the powerful the ancient of days the roar of roars the leader of leaders. He is holy, mighty, and true. His ways are right, his word eternal, and he is unchanging. He is redeemer, savior, Lord, and guide. When I fall, he forgives. When I am weak, he is strong. When I am lost, he is the way. When I'm afraid, he is my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I am broken, he mends me. When I am... I face persecution, he shields me. When I face loss, he provides me. When I face death, he carries me home. He said, that settles it. He is on my side. God is in control. It is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Wow. That, that is powerful. And uh, anyway, I'm going to give you all a chance Maybe to say what you're grateful for or what maybe you have a New Year's resolution if you don't want to share it. But I'm going to open up. Anybody have anything they want to say?